What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Umbrella Academy video and uh, this video is going to cover by far the most requested person I haven't already done a video for and that is Klaus Hargreaves aka number four, The Seance. So before I start, feel free to check out our other Umbrella Academy videos. There should be a number of links or things on the page right now, depending upon what I felt like doing while I was editing this video. So for those of you who have already seen our other videos, this next couple seconds will be a brief recap. But Klaus is one of the members of the Umbrella Academy. The Umbrella Academy is a collection of seven children who were all adopted and placed into a superhero team by the eccentric billionaire Sir Reginald Hargreaves. Like everybody else in the Umbrella Academy, Klaus was born unexpectedly on the same day. What's interesting about the children born on this day was that none of the women who gave birth to these children were actually pregnant before that day. They conceived, carried, and gave birth within a matter of minutes. What's more interesting is that the children born on this day all seem to have some very special type of ability. 43 superpowered individuals were all born on the same day. These videos cover the comic book origins and abilities of the characters, but there will be some elements of this video that contain spoilers for the show and potential future seasons of the show. So that being said, if you are sticking around for that, then, you know, consider yourself warned. Klaus as a child was very loving and nice, but over the years he became more and more emotionally distant and cruel. His change in temperament comes from the fact that his adopted father, Reginald Hargreaves, experimented with his powers more than any of the other children. Klaus's powers are also fairly morbid, especially for a young child. Klaus has the ability to channel the dead and use them as a medium. Klaus has been shown to be able to let the spirits talk, act, and move through his body. And also a weird side note, but uh, somehow, at least in the comics, his powers don't really seem to work very well if he has his shoes on, or at least he can't use all of them if his shoes are on. Kind of weird. Klaus has also been shown to have extremely powerful telekinesis and the ability to fly and levitate much like a spirit would. Now, on to his history. Ten years after their adoption and after rigorous training, the Umbrella Academy makes their debut in Paris to stop a zombie robot Gustave Eiffel in the rampaging Eiffel Tower. During this fight, Klaus attempts to channel the dead spirit of a French engineer in order to learn how to stop the rampaging tower from destroying Paris. The Umbrella Academy is, of course, successful on that mission. And the next mission they're shown going on is against Dr. Terminal. Dr. Terminal is a person with Einstein syndrome who builds a device that keeps his body alive by eating matter. He also kidnaps their sister, Allison. And the last mission that we see him on as a child shows him fighting a living version of the Abraham Lincoln Memorial. More on that in this video as well as in the videos for Luther and Five. Eventually, after the death of Ben, aka number six, the horror, the team disbands and they go about their individual lives. Many years later, after the death of Reginald Hargreaves, the members of the Umbrella Academy return home. Klaus doesn't seem too emotionally broken up over the death of his father, even joking that he might commune with him over his missing allowance. Klaus is remarked at this time to be a drug addict, presumably due to the years of morbid communication with the dead. Before Klaus returns home, he actually leaves the institution of Shiny View Rest Home, where he was checked in for exhaustion and depression. After the funeral, the team learns of an impending apocalypse, but before they can investigate, the team must reassemble to face the Terminots, a group of robots that Dr. Terminal programmed and then hid. They were designed to reactivate and attack if the Umbrella Academy ever reformed. They defeat the Terminots and deduce that the robots were not the threat that brings about the apocalypse. The team continues to investigate. They eventually learn that their sister Vanya, number seven, the white violin, and a very specific piece of music written by the orchestra of Verdamptum is the root cause of the apocalypse. They meet Vanya at the Icarus Theater, where she cuts the rumor's throat, defeats most of the team, and starts pulling gigantic meteorites from the moon into the earth. In a last-ditch effort, Klaus does a bunch of badass things. First, he channels another orchestra of dead musicians, including Igor Stravinsky, to drown out the music that Vanya's making, and he also fakes channeling the dead spirit of their father. Pretending to be Reginald, he goes about chastising Vanya and telling her that she's throwing a temper tantrum and that he's going to fix her mess. 
When she becomes enraged that her father is once again belittling her, her brother Five shoots her in the back of the head. However, the suite had already been played, and in a last-ditch move, Klaus uses his telekinesis to stop some very large meteors from crashing into the Earth and killing everybody. Klaus and his powers ultimately save the day. Because of this triumph, Klaus becomes incredibly famous. People everywhere know what he did and how he saved the world. In the story Dallas, the team learns that Five is actually a time-traveling assassin who abandoned a mission to kill JFK in order to come home and stop the apocalypse from killing everybody during the events of Apocalypse Suite. Two additional time-traveling assassins named Hazel and Cha-Cha come to apprehend Five and kill him. The assassins first abduct Klaus by knocking him out and use him to extort the location of Five. But Klaus doesn't know where Five is, so instead, Hazel and Cha-Cha just torture him endlessly. Klaus successfully reaches out to Space Boy through the TV in his hotel room where he's tied up. We also learn at this time that Hazel and Cha-Cha have a nuclear weapon. They extorted this information while torturing Klaus. Klaus knew that his father, Reginald Hargreaves, obtained a nuclear bomb from JFK in exchange for a favor a long time ago. They then shoot Klaus in the head, presumably killing him. Space Boy arrives in order to save the day, but he's pretty much immediately tased and incapacitated. It's believed at this point that Klaus is dead, but the scene shifts and we see Klaus meet God. God says that neither he nor the devil actually want Klaus, so instead of him staying in the afterlife, he's sending his ass back to the world of the living. Klaus wakes up and asks a maid who had entered the room to take his shoes off. When Hazel and Cha-Cha come back, he inhabits the body of Hazel, kills Cha-Cha, and then makes Hazel kill himself. Brutal. Alright, so I keep dancing around this part, but if you're confused, the rest of this story details why Five is traveling back in time to kill JFK. See, Five has a mission to kill JFK to prevent another end-of-the-world scenario, which is wild because historically everybody loved JFK, but when the family learns that Five is going back in time to kill JFK, Luther, Diego, and Klaus embark on this quest to stop him, believing that they're doing the right thing. Klaus and Luther go back to the Umbrella Academy where they meet up with Diego, and in an apparent fit of insanity, Klaus digs up the grave of Pogo. Instead of Pogo's corpse, they find the body of a dead time-traveling agent. They use the body as a medium to go back in time to the year 1963 to stop their brother Five from killing JFK. As soon as they leave, the nukes that Hazel and Cha-Cha stole are detonated and it destroys the world, leaving the only chance for our heroes to save the world somewhere in the past. Klaus, Diego, and Luther travel back to the year 1963. This part is ridiculous, but Diego ends up in a mission where he's transporting the corpse of an ancient mummy across Vietnam in order for the seance to resurrect it in Saigon and kill everybody ending the war. The team gets jumped by a group of Vietnamese vampires, yes, vampires, and the seance is forced to resurrect the mummy early. The rampaging mummy is destroyed by Space Boy, and the three of them travel to Dallas via a televator, a device used by their father and rebuilt by Klaus and a younger version of Pogo. It's also assumed that Pogo is now alive again, having survived via being warned of his impending fate. The team attempts to stop Five from his mission of killing JFK, but ultimately fail when number three, Allison, kills JFK, masquerading as Jackie Kennedy. The team returns home to their own timeline and once again disbands. Klaus next appears during the latest series, Hotel Oblivion, and this last little bit of the video is going to feature a few pieces from the latest series, but I won't cover much because that story is not complete at the time of this video's recording. When the story starts, Klaus is in a really bad place. He's hanging out with a group of bikers named the Mothers of Agony. Get it? Like, Sons of Anarchy? Anyway. They are using him as a medium to extort money from other people in exchange for heroin. A rich widower comes and asks Klaus to channel the spirit of her dead husband so she can find out where he hid money. He does, but instead of telling her where it is, he lies to her and she leaves. He leads the bikers to where the money is stored in the desert, and they are all collectively jumped by the widower and her henchmen. A very scared Klaus lashes out, killing pretty much everybody there. He takes the money and he leaves. When he returns to the Mothers of Agony headquarters, he shoots up and overdoses. The last living member of the Mothers of Anarchy returns, sees his overdosed body, and throws him in the garbage. 
It's at this point that somebody resembling death picks up his body and carries it to the emergency room, presumably saving his life. And that is about it for Klaus's comic book origins and powers. I hope you learned a lot, and if you think I missed something, feel free to let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe because we will have an explained video for every character in the Umbrella Academy core team coming relatively soon. Also, if you're already a subscriber or even if you're new and want to support us, consider becoming a member by clicking the join button below. We have a ton of cool membership perks. Also, check out our insane Discord server where you can meet tons of other comic and comic book movie and TV fans. That link is in the comment section and in the description. This has been Nick with Key Issues, and you know the motto, comics over everything.